Hi everyone, welcome to this week's video. This week we are going to be making a summer bouquet. I've got an order today and I thought it would be nice to show you what flowers are going into it, what's looking fantastic out in the flower patch. And also we're going to be talking about just looking after your flowers in the heat. So if you have got some in your home to enjoy in a vase or you've been given it as a gift, how do you get them looking really nice for more than a day or two without them drooping if it is really hot weather? So here in Scotland at the moment, we are enjoying an unusual heat wave. It's not often we get such a stretch of hot sunny weather with no rain. So a good few weeks now, we've had no rain at all, which has been a challenge for watering the flower patches and keeping everything looking really good and growing well. And also it's been really, really hot. So we have been enjoying temperatures in the mid twenties, which is unusual for us, especially day after day. Normally we'd have one or two really nice days and then it would go back to being cool and rainy, but we haven't had that. And unusually the heat is coming through really early on in the mornings and it is lasting well into the evenings as well. And that has made it quite challenging from cutting the flowers and being able to water the garden and the flower patches and keep everything looking good. So I'll have a chat about that as we go through as well. So I hope you enjoy today's video. There's certainly some lovely flowers as you can see here. So we'll chat through what these are in a minute. And also I hope you pick up some tips for getting the most out of your flowers at home in the heat. So it's the middle of June. What is looking really nice in the flower patches at the moment? Well, you may be able to see down here at the front. I'll give you a closer look in a second. We've got some lovely ranunculus and the ranunculus are flowering their socks off at the moment. So that's mid June and that is from my sowing of those corns in late January, early February. Um, so if you don't do any autumn sowing ones and get them through the winter um, and get them flowering early spring, if you do a batch after Christmas time in that midwinter phase, you'll get them flowering now in June. And I thought that maybe they might slow down a bit. They don't like the heat. So I was thinking that they might go dormant and stop producing flowers for me. But actually, so far, they're um, flowering really, really well. So I think we'll have another probable week of those before the season moves on. We've also got some lovely foliage here and um, we'll have a look at that in a second. We've got some peonies which are hiding over there I'll show you. And over here we've got some saponaria which is one of my favourite branching fillers. And we've got some grasses, ladies mantle and astrantia and irises and aurelia. So let's go and have a closer look. It's got some lovely ranunculus here. Now normally I would be cutting these at a more closed stage, but the heat has just been bringing them out really quickly. So I've cut them closed and then the heat's just bringing them out. And then over here, we've got some gorgeous peonies as well. We've got some oryngium up here that we're gonna use in the bouquet. This is Gypsophila Covent Garden, which is a lovely filler to use. Over here, we've got that lovely Phacelia. And then in terms of foliage that I'm using in this bouquet, we've got Snowberry, which I really, really like using. You can see that here. Over here, we've got some Privet, which is fantastic for holding up well out of water. This here is Saponaria, which is absolutely beautiful filler. And I grow that in pink and whites. Got Nigella. We've got some Aurelia here as well. And over here, we've got some squirrel tail grass and some Breeza Maxima as well there. Some ladies mantle, some of these beautiful pink corn cockles, some lovely pink astrantia. And there you can see we've got some Dutch iris, really nice blue color. So lots and lots of lovely flowers to go into this bouquet today. So when do I cut my flowers for arranging? Well, I actually do it at different times depending on the weather. So if it is our usual typical Scottish summer weather, that means that we get lots of rainy days, we get very little really intensely hot days. And in that case, the soil is normally very moist and probably only watering maybe once, twice a week. So therefore I would cut my flowers in the evening and I would let them condition overnight and then they're really in a super shape to um, be used to make arrangements the next day. 
but at the moment it's completely different. We have a huge amount of heat and um, the heat is strongest in that early evening stage, late afternoon, early evening. Far too hot for me to cut them then um, when I normally might be cutting them and instead in that evening time that's when I'm watering and it does take a couple of hours to get through all the watering of the whole flower patches at this time. So what I do instead is I get up very early before the girls are out of their bed and I cut my flowers then. So we're looking at between six and seven in the morning. I will cut my flowers and I will then get them into our old stone garage to condition for several hours before arranging. And the reason that I go for that switch at that time is because in the evenings I water and the flowers then take up that moisture overnight. The soil stays nice and moist because the heat has gone from the sun overnight. So in the morning when I cut them, those flowers are in their best shape. They've taken up all that nice water, their stems are fully turgid, they're cut at that healthy stage directly into water, out into the stone cold garage and then they can condition. So if I cut them in the evening, they would have been in that hot sun all day and I would only be just watering the soil at that time in the evening. So they wouldn't have had the chance to take up all that nice water. So just me, that's how I do it. I um, feel that in very, very hot weather, I'll um, cut the flowers in the morning instead. And just by getting up early, it makes sure that they do have several hours to condition before I arrange them later in the day. So when I cut the flowers in the flower patch, um, in that early morning, they go straight into buckets of water. So that's another thing that in the heat, um, I never have the flowers out of water. The buckets go to the flower patch with me and I cut them directly into the buckets and then carry them up to the stone garage. And that just helps prevent them wilting as well. And also your stems will start to seal up. So by just putting them straight into water when you harvest, you're preventing that from happening. So it means that the uptake of water is just that much better with the stem. So in terms of what I do for bouquets, um, this is how they get packaged. So they are in a craft living vase. I have a sticker on the front to say that they come from Cloudberry Flowers and a ribbon for a bit of decoration. They've got some tissue paper in the box as well. Um, so this works really well and I have inside a recycled glass jar full of water. So this means that the stems are never out of water when you're giving them to a person because on a hot day like this, if they were out of water, they would have wilted before you got them home. So by having them in this jar of water within the craft living vase, then that just keeps them nice and hydrated. And the craft living vases, they come in all sorts of different colors. They come flat packed like this. So you just fold them up along the lines there and um, really easy to do, takes you 30 seconds. And I think it's a really nice way of presenting your flowers. Um, in the past, years and years ago, I would have used cellophane and made an aqua pack, but I think this is a little bit more environmentally friendly. So the first thing I'm gonna do is cut a length of twine, quite a long one, and this is gonna go around my bouquet when I need to tie it off. So by doing it at the beginning, that just means that I'm ready for later on. So I'll put that over there. And then the next thing I'm gonna to have to do is I'm gonna to have to make sure all my stems are prepped. So what you want is you want to have, let's have a look here, what have we got? This is our Gypsophila Convent Garden, really, really pretty filler. And I don't want to have any lower leaves on it. So I want to take off anything like this that I think might be going below the water line. You don't want any of that sitting in water because that'll just decay and then that just makes the water go horrible and then your flowers won't last as long either. So it's always worth stripping your lower leaves off anything and that goes for foliage as well. So we'll have a look at that. This one I think I've already done. You can see there's a nice long length there with no leaves on it, so that's perfect. So the next job is just to go around all the flowers I want to use and make sure there's no lower leaves on them. And that just makes it easier to make your bouquet once you've got started. It's a bit difficult to be stripping leaves at the same time as holding the bouquet in one hand and then you've got lower leaves on it that you need to get rid of. So much easier to do it right at the beginning. And then if it's cold weather, you can just lay all your flowers out so you'd see what you've got. But in hot weather like this, I prefer just to keep them in their buckets of water for as long as possible. So this saponaria here, 
I think things like this will be below the waterline. So you just pinch them off with your finger. This one as well here, I think that's gonna get in the way. It's always useful to have a bucket as well to put your offcuts in, keep everything nice and tidy. So this nigella is a good example of one that's got quite a lot of ferny foliage down the bottom that would be below the waterline. So just pull that off. And then you're just left with a nice stem in the end. Or a layer. We've got some ferny foliage there, so we'll just take that off. So we're good to go. So the first thing that I do is I build a framework with a bouquet where I will start off with my foliage. So we're gonna start off with getting our privet out over here and then we're going to have a look at the snowberry as well and get that out and add that in so i'm going to stand up just now because it's easier for me to stand up making this and then you'll be able to see a bit closer what i'm doing but you can see that lovely foliage there making a nice start to the bouquet so we'll see if we can add in any more foliage around the other side trick to making a bouquet is just to keep turning it um, so that you're adding stems in at a different angle. Everybody will make their bouquet slightly differently. There we go, that's four nice pieces of foliage added in there to start with. And then I might add in some of my larger filler material. So I've got this lovely Orlea here. And I'm gonna just add that in, just round there like that. And then I'm just gonna turn again so that I can add something around this side. So now I'm going to get some of that nice ladies mantle. Ladies mantle is a really fantastic filler. You can see it here. And it just comes out this time of year for me, end of June, beginning of July. I'm just turning it around and adding some more bits in as I go around. So the bouquets I make are country garden in style. They're loose. They're meant to look like you have wandered through a garden and picked the most beautiful flowers that you could see. So they're quite loose in structure. That's looking really pretty there. Now I've got some peonies. So I think I might just add one of those in there. That's looking really pretty. This gypsophilic of a garden is a really pretty filler as well. I'm just going to see if I can just pop that in the middle there. That looks really pretty. And then we'll turn it round again. And we'll see about adding another peony. Over this side. And I'm going to add some ladies mantle. Just in there. Another peony that will go in over this side. So really, really pretty. Add some more Aurelia here at the back. And then we've got this lovely Saponaria here for a bit of pretty colour. So I'm just going to pop that in. Orangium is a lovely, lovely flower to add into bouquets as well. Grow lots of it in the garden. I've grown some new Orangium from seed this year, which has been really good. It will not provide a lot of flowers for me in that first year, but following on from that, it should do. I'm gonna add in this lovely Astrantia next. If we can find some more. Pop around this side. So it's 
starting to come together now. It's looking really pretty. It's got the most lovely ranunculus there we're going to add in as well. And turn it again. And do another turn. When you've got a bouquet that's starting to form but you've got some gaps in the middle, you can just insert flowers into it. So I've got a nice ranunculus there that I'm just going to add in to fill that particular gap. Got this lovely pink corn cockle that I'm going to add into. So we've got lots of pinks and whites in this bouquet so far, so it's quite nice to insert in some nigella as well, just to give a little bit of contrast in colour. That blue there, it's really pretty. Got another run here, and I think we can spot a gap down here. So there's a few flowers that do keep on growing once they are in a bouquet and one of them is Phacelia. So if I'm going to pop Phacelia into a bouquet, which I'm going to do just now, I am going to tuck it down quite tight because I know that within 24 hours it will have really shot up. So you can't really see it there, it's just down there, but I know by tomorrow it'll be up a bit further. Whereas if I'd left it at the height of the other flowers that I wanted it to be at, then it would have just shot up above the bouquet and would look a bit silly tomorrow. Another one that really keeps on growing in the vase as well is Hesperus. So that's another one that I tuck down a little bit tighter than I otherwise would. Just down there at the back, you can see it there. So that's gonna get tucked down like that below the Astrantia and I know it'll come up. Hesperus is lovely to have in a bouquet because it smells delicious. It smells absolutely lovely. Now I think we need some of these blue iris in because they are a lovely contrasting colour as well. So I'm just going to put some of those around the edges. Adding in the iris, I'm just turning the bouquet each time to see where I want to slot them in. There we go, we've got some Nice iris all the way around now. So this is a large bouquet that's been ordered. So I do do small ones that are slightly smaller than this as well. So when I get to this stage and my bouquet is looking quite full, I will then tie it off. Um, and then I can put it into water and I can have a good look at it. So I've got my string here, my twine, and I just make a loop like that. And then I hold the loop at the top there put the twine round the bouquet and then I feed the two strands through the loop that's on my finger there, like that. And then you can just pull that tight and then I can just put the twine one way around one way, round around the other way and then I just tie it off loosely. I don't want to tie it too tight at the stage because I might add things into it. So at that stage I will now trim the stem. So I've got my snips there and I've got my bucket of bits that I'm putting it in and I'm just going to trim my stems into that. It won't be their final height at the moment because like I say I'm not finished with the bouquet. I just want to see what it looks like. It's also useful if you're like me you might have very small hands and then when you're making a bouquet and um, it's getting quite large, it's quite difficult to hold on to it. So you can tie it off at this stage, give your hand a rest, and then you can see what it looks like and if it's missing anything or if you need to tweak it. So I've got my jar of water here and I'm just gonna pop it in and then I can have a look at what it's looking like. 
The other great thing about tying off a bouquet and having a jar of water or a bucket of water to hand to put it in is if suddenly the doorbell goes or you've got kids at home that need something, if you can tie it off and get it into water, you can come back and finish it off afterwards. So um, it's definitely worth having some water to hand and some twine and snips so you can tie it off. So it's looking really nice at the moment really happy with it. There's not really too many gaps, but I do know something that I've got missing and that is some nice grasses to finish it off with. And they just add some texture to it and something completely different that people might not have seen before. So let's have a look at the grasses. So I love growing grasses for bouquets because I think they add something really, really different. Um, it's a bit of a talking point. People might not have seen these grasses before. They just add texture and movement to flower arrangements. And I am going to do a video on this. I'm working away on my footage to show you how to grow them from seed right through to using them. But I thought you might like to see them today because they're just starting to come out in the garden now. So this here is Brisa Maxima and it's fantastic, really nice to grow. And I also grow Brisa Media, which is very similar to this, but just tiny, tiny in comparison. So still lots long stems, but not quite the large heads like these much tinier heads on them. And this is squirrel tail grass here, which is a fantastic unusual one that you can use in arrangements and um, just adds just something completely different. And actually, sometimes it just kind of shimmers and the light takes on a different color and things. It's fantastic to use. I've got some others out in the garden as well, which I'll be showing you in that video, which will be coming up soon. I'm just waiting for the panicum sprinkles to come in to bloom in the cloud grass so that I can show you those as well, but they're not quite there yet. So we'll just wait till they're out and then I'll do that video on that. Nice thing about grasses is that they are very fine and wiry, so you can just insert them into a bouquet um, when you're getting to the end stages and you can just have a look and see where you think they might look nice. So here's a bit of squirrel tail grass and we will just pop that in there and it definitely, having it all tied off just saves your hands at this stage. You can just see it there and then that will just catch the light and look really pretty when it's in a vase. Sometimes you find the odd bit of grass, leafy stem at the bottom, so you can just take that off. And then we'll slot in another bit over here. Yeah, very, very easy to slot in just because it is so thin and wiry that you can just grab hold of it and pull it through. There we go. You may want to make sure that you don't pull it through too much. It's too low down that you don't get the effect of it. You want to be able to see it. So I'm just going to turn the bouquet again and add some more around this side. So this is the final touches. And then we'll get it cut to the right stem length for the jar and get it wrapped up. The nice thing about flower growing is that every week you've got different flowers that come into bloom so um, every bouquet is always going to be completely different which is what I love about the job. Right here we go here's another bit here and then we'll get some of that nice Brisa Maxima grass in as well. There we go. So it's looking really nice. Here's some Breeze Maxima grass. So now it is time to wrap our bouquet. So it's had half an hour of resting time in a cool, dark place just to settle down, take up some water. And now I want to wrap it. So I've got my craft living vase, which is all prepped already. I've got a clean glass of fresh water for it to go into. And I have got 
two sheets of tissue paper and two sheets of craft paper. So what I've done with these is I've folded them in a particular way and I've put a slit up the middle. And I've done that with the tissue paper and the craft paper. Now I'm not gonna look at that in too much detail in today's video because I have a separate video all about how I wrap my bouquets. And that just shows you from start to finish how I fold up the craft living vases, decorate them, how I fold the tissue paper, cut it to size, put the slits in it and how I wrap the bouquets. So you can see the whole of that process in a video and I will leave the link to that at the end of this one. So just follow this video through to the end, click on the link and that will take you through to how to wrap a bouquet. But because it's hot today, we're just gonna get through this quite quickly and you'll see quickly how I'm doing it and then um, you can watch in more depth in the other one. on first and then craft paper on afterwards. A little bit of tape just to hold it together. So that's looking really nice. And then it'll be ready to go into its bath. And then once it is in its bath, then it can just get tucked into our craft living bath here. So that's our bouquet all ready for our customer. So I'll be delivering that later on today. But what do you do with your flowers if it's really hot weather, you've received a really nice gift from someone or you've treated yourself, how do you get the most out of them? Well, when you receive your bouquet like this, it may or may not be in water. It depends where you have got it from. If it's not in water, whatever you do, get it into water as soon as you can. If it hasn't been in water, your stems might have sealed themselves up and that means that they're not able to take up any more water. So the first thing that you would want to do is you would want to get a pair of scissors or some flower snips like these and you would want to trim the stems, the bottom of the stems at an angle and that freshly cut um, stem will then be able to take up water again. So that's the first thing I would do make sure that you've got a nice clean vessel to put um, some clean water in and have a pair of scissors at the ready to recut those stems if the flowers arrive out of water. The other thing to double check is when you receive flowers, you might find that they've got some leaves on the lower stems. It depends how you have received them. So sometimes you receive them in boxes that come through the post where you then have to strip the leaves yourselves, or sometimes you might have bought them in a supermarket and again, there is leaves lower down. So make sure that you have removed all those lower leaves um, that are gonna be below the water line in your vase at home and that just helps keep the water nice and clean and not full of decomposing um, leaf matter in it. So um, that's another tip for managing to keep your flowers that bit longer in a vase to enjoy. Then what you want to do is you want to find a good place for them in the house. So it's very, very hot at the moment. You will have sun maybe streaming in your windows. You don't want to put your flowers into direct sunlight. So although it looks very nice to have them on a windowsill or sitting in a conservatory, they just won't last there. They will wilt. So find a place out of direct sunlight 
And certainly if you're receiving the flowers and then you want to give them on as a gift, quite often I get people collecting flowers from the stall or they order them to pick up and then pass on to somebody else, then put them in a cool, dark place until you want to give them to that person. And then they will be at their absolute best and freshest when you do that. Alternatively, um, if you are wanting to enjoy them in the house, but it's very, very hot weather, have them in the room that you want to see them in, but maybe at night time when you go to bed, move them to a cool, dark place, and then they'll last that bit longer for you. As the days go on, your flowers will need fresh water. So I would say in hot weather, every one to two days, just change the water to some nice fresh water. Your flowers will drink a lot more in hot weather. So you might come back and there might be not very much water in your vase at all. So just keep a check on it, especially if it is a vase that you can't see through, um, then you might not know how much water is still in there. You might think it's okay because you've recently given them a drink, but actually the hot weather means that they've drank that much more and then there's nothing left in the bottom. And then those stems seal up. So if that's the case, retrim the stems again, get some fresh water and they'll last that bit longer for you. Now, all flowers are completely different. Some flowers last a long time in a vase, like the Astrantia, cornflowers and things, they will go on for a long time and even start drying for you. Um, but other ones will not last as long. So things like sweet peas, dahlias, things like that, they will only last maybe four or five days for you. So if you see any faded flowers within your arrangement, just remove them, de-head, deadhead them, um, or just remove the stem completely, um, and then just enjoy the ones that are left. Because if you keep ones that are dying in there around the others, then they're likely to go over a bit quicker as well. The next thing is not to put your flowers near the fruit bowl because things like bananas, fruits like that, give off a gas called ethylene and that can actually start the breakdown process of your flowers um, earlier on. They'll start to decompose quicker. So away from fruit bowls and away from direct sunlight. Give them some fresh water every couple of days, remove faded flowers, retrim the stems every few days and that will mean that you can enjoy your flowers for that bit longer. Thanks for watching today and I hope you did enjoy seeing me putting together a June summer bouquet. I'm really loving all the flowers that we've got in bloom at the moment. Um, so many beautiful ones from the peonies to the astrantia to the ranunculus and that lovely breeze of maxima grass that you can just see swaying away there. Um, if you are wanting to find out any more about my flower arranging, I have a video on um, making summer jam jar posies and I've got another one on making a summer bouquet that I did last year. So it'll just show you some different flowers in that for interest. And if you do want to know more about that wrapping of a bouquet and how I do it, then please do click on the link at the end of this video. It's just coming up just now. So next week, I think we're going to go back in the garden again. Um, I'm hoping by then we will have had some rain and some consistent rain as well, because I think just a, one night of rain is not going to be enough for that soil. It really needs some consistent rain coming. So fingers crossed for that. In the meantime, I'm going to keep on watering and um, keep on staking and getting that plant netting out and getting those final last seedlings into the ground. And I've had a little bit of sprouting on those biennial seeds as well. So they are starting to germinate, which is great. So lots to show you next week. Have a great week. And if you are having the spell of sunshine as well, I hope you're enjoying it and not getting too hot at work or the kids aren't getting too hot at that end of term time that we're coming up to now.